the Purple Gang, the causes, the beginnings, the rise, the peak, the fall. Prohibition was the prevention by law of the manufacture and sale of alcohol in the United States between 1920 and 1933. Just as the First World War came to a close, America finally went through with executing the idea that alcohol went against its beliefs and that it was destroying American character. In order to protect its beliefs, the United States implemented the 18th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, establishing the rules of prohibition. Prohibition served to protect people from the dangers of drunkenness but had unintended consequences. Not only did prohibition cause a large decrease in tax revenue, it also significantly increased the amount of organized crime in the United States. The initial effects of prohibition were the closings of breweries, distilleries, and saloons, which directly eliminated thousands of jobs across the country. Even more American jobs were eliminated indirectly because of prohibition as thousands of barrel makers, truckers, waiters, and other trades involved in the alcohol industry lost their jobs. Alcohol was not just a drink to enjoy among friends in a saloon, or in the eyes of temperance supporters, a drink concocted by the devil. It was an entire industry which Americans depended upon. While the temperance supporters celebrated their victory, many other Americans were upset or even infuriated by this prohibition of alcohol. Thousands upon thousands of Americans lost their jobs, leaving them astray. Other Americans were angered that their lifestyles would have to change because of the new amendment. This mix of emotions from many groups of people made it clear that while alcohol had been prohibited by law, the manufacture, sale, and consumption of alcohol was going to carry on. While the United States government can enact laws such as putting a ban on alcohol, Americans who disagree with such laws strongly enough will do whatever it takes to bypass them and continue their lives as they would have without the law in place. So, what did it take to continue life under prohibition somewhat like normal? Bootlegging. Bootleggers would smuggle alcohol from other places into the United States or make it themselves in secret within the borders of the U.S. Groups of bootleggers would work together and form gangs in order to make copious amounts of money through the illegal sale of alcohol, one of the most prominent gangs being the Purple Gang. The Purple Gang was initially a small group of troublemakers. They were taught by other mobsters such as Charles Leader and Henry Shore and eventually started a gang themselves. The group was first known as the Sugar House Gang, but later became known as the Purple Gang. Victims of the gang described the members as being tainted and off-color, relating them to rotten meat and inspiring them to change their name to the Purple Gang. The Purple Gang began as a loose federation of criminals, all with the common goals of making money in a time where there was uncertainty of financial stability on the horizon. The initial group of criminals became friends at school in Little Jerusalem, an area of Detroit where poor Jewish immigrants moved in the wake of World War I. As children, this group of friends began to pickpocket and steal trivial items, but as they grew up, the crimes they committed together became more and more sophisticated. As this group of kids became adults, they evolved from pickpocketing to armed robbery and extortion. As this group grew from a loose band of friends to an organized constituency of developed criminals, they needed leadership. That leadership came in the form of four brothers, the Bernstein brothers. The Bernstein brothers, Raymond, Joseph, Isidore, and Abraham, led the Purple Gang into its adulthood and recruited more members. One of those new members included my own great-great-grandpa Larry, a police officer turned prominent bootlegger who ultimately ended up in prison for over a decade on murder charges related to the Purple Gang. The Bernstein brothers, chiefly led by Abe, moved the Purple Gang into its ultimate prominence and dominance of Detroit by getting involved with bootlegging which led to the gang's ultimate, while temporary, success. The Purple Gang had recently begun to work together with Al Capone and his gang. They discovered that if they worked together, they were able to get away with more intense crimes. Along with Capone's gang, the Purple Gang committed various crimes, including illegal gambling, bootlegging, and even murder. One particular member of the Purple Gang, Fred Burke, was the main perpetrator in many of these murders. During the Valentine's Day Massacre, Fred Burke worked together with members of Al Capone's gang. Some of the gang dressed up as police officers and tricked seven men into believing they were under arrest. However, when these men turned around, Burke and the others fired upon them, instantly killing six of them. The seventh, a man by the name of Frank Gusenberg, survived, but he refused to say who had done it. He died shortly after due to his injuries. Though there were many witnesses of this massacre, Burke and the others were never charged for this crime. Witnesses were too scared to talk to the police. They had seen what these men would do to those against them. Witnesses worried that if they were involved in putting a member of a gang in jail, 
The rest of the gang would target them and their family. Fear led all the witnesses to stay quiet. While the massacres are the crimes the Purple Gang is often remembered for, they were all for the common goal of protecting what mattered most to the Purple Gang, bootlegging. Bootlegging was the main objective of the Purple Gang. Smuggling alcohol from Canada into Michigan, the Purple Gang was one of the largest gangs of bootleggers at the time. In total, they contributed to nearly 25,000 illegal saloons. Without the alcohol delivered by the gang, there would have been very little alcohol in Detroit, and there would have been far less crime. Bootlegging also led to gang wars and violence. The Purple Gang had designated territory which gangs had to abide by. However, they often ignored these boundaries and sold alcohol in other areas, leading to gang wars and territorial disputes. The Purple Gang had a lot of power over other gangs due to their size, and often came out on top during these disputes. The gang made millions of dollars through the illegal sale of alcohol, whether it was within their own territory or the territory of other gangs. The Purple Gang started to decline due to interfighting. It began to self-destruct when in September of 1931, the leaders of the gang killed three of their own members, which resulted in three of the leaders going to jail. The three men who were killed had gone outside of their territory and their leaders were angry with them. As a result, they were invited to a peace meeting to resolve this issue. At the meeting, they were shot and killed by four high-ranking members of the gang. Likely bribed or threatened, the driver who had brought the men to this meeting later told the police what had happened. This witness led to three of the four men involved being arrested and sent to prison for life. This event became known as the Collingwood Manor Massacre. This massacre, along with other arrests within the gang, contributed to the downfall of the gang. Without leaders, the gang naturally began to crumble. Furthermore, other members were killed in disputes between other gangs. By 1935, the Purple Gang had lost most of their power. It was inevitable that bootlegging would become so prominent in America following Prohibition. While there were temperance groups that wanted to get rid of alcohol for good, there were enough Americans who still wanted to consume alcohol that bootlegging had to rise to prominence as it did. The unforeseen consequences of Prohibition, the violence, the crime, the civil unrest, left America in a position that was arguably worse off than it was prior to Prohibition. This is a prime example of the fact that when something is banned, people in America will still find a way to obtain that banned item no matter what. That is why it is better for the government to allow alcohol to be legal so it can have tight regulations on its production, which prevent the dangers of the crime and unsafe liquor of Prohibition. Gangs like the Purple Gang unknowingly changed the minds of government officials who previously supported Prohibition, as they realized America would be safer with legal alcohol and strict regulations. This eventually led to the 21st Amendment, giving control of alcohol back to the states, who largely legalized alcohol with regulations coinciding. While the Purple Gang is often looked back on as a violent gang of the Prohibition era, it was more than just that. Through all of the massacres and hits and turf wars, the Purple Gang was able to provide alcohol to the city of Detroit and beyond in a time where alcohol was hard to come by. The Purple Gang was a group of people who unintentionally influenced society to move towards a safer and more regulated America where gangs like itself could no longer exist.